Oh, I'm delighted to say Linda Gorman is here with us. We're going to talk about the uh, World Cup. The semi-finals are upon us. First game kicks off at nine o'clock this morning. Second game tomorrow is kind of the one you want to talk about. It's more the England-Australia game today. Yeah. yeah, that's going to be really, really exciting. You know, especially the rivalry between them and the familiarity. They obviously know each other very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But who's been performing? You know, outperforming one another. I think England came out of the lesser, um, tougher group and the Aussies um, and their form has been up and down however they're very resilient they're very good across the board three flap you know three at the back and they play a completely different system they've superb forwards who only look for a half chance and they took a couple of half chances and scored you know whereas up the other end I'm not sure if Kerr's going to be playing whether mm. she's down you know and um, she was formidable when she came on instant impact there's lots of things going on between them and um, I've noticed that the Aussies from the get-go just go 100 miles an hour if England can sustain that type of pressure but then if they're playing three at the back you're not going to know you know who's going to drop back who's capable of dropping back and because Kerr is um she has all the confidence because she's very, um, what would you say, she's great success against Erbs. So she's, she knows how to score goals against her. Obviously, there's, uh, the injury concern is, is the reason why we don't know if she's going to start or not. What do you do if you're the Australian management? Are you thinking this game, good chance it's nil all and goes to penalties and I want her on at the end? Or do you think... We have no chance here except trying to win early, score. And so you start her, hope you get a lead and then batten down the hatches. Well, it's just the way I would think that with uh, Katie McCabe, she didn't particularly have a good last game, but her presence was needed because she was an instant threat. Therefore, I would think Kerr is the same. Listen, Kerr looked great. She didn't look as if she was carrying anything. She got stuck into a couple of tackles. I think the first time she even moved on the pitch, she slipped and up it like a light she got stuck between players yeah. so she she didn't show any sign of weakness mm. and it's a home World Cup semi-final oh. <laughs> like listen Australia is not known for its popularity in, in soccer but I can tell you the country has got behind these players I mean the, we've gotten videos back from friends of ours who are over there and the f- you know the fan parks and the stadiums are packed and it's just like it's given them a new lease of life you know the ashes are taking a back step you know the yeah. rugby back step so you have you know. to start her right yeah I would start her yeah. definitely start her you know see what you can get over they're quite adaptable England as well weren't they because the Nigeria game we spoke about it last week pushed close and again against Colombia they go behind they're dealing with a low block you know, Casado and Ramirez, two players that they had to probably put more focus on than some of the other Colombians, but they were cl- clearly adaptable and even to go and the goal behind. I yeah, mean, they, they were lucky actually to, they were. I thought they were lucky against Nigeria, but they came back against Colombia who are fiercely competitive in the middle and never gave up. Mm-hmm. And they sustained an immense amount of pressure, you know, from the Colombians in the latter half of the game. Um, and I think that that resilience is going to, you know, this, help them to overcome whatever's going to be coming at them and of course we've got great midfielders um, with Cooney, Cross and Gary have been playing fantastic, really really good and then you have Stanaway and Walsh on the other side so if they can cancel each other out that would be great and then we have wingers but one one player who has impressed me really really well at the back has been um, uh, Kennedy Oh, she's such a header of a ball. Now, when I talk about heading the ball, she can direct it where she wants it to go. And she's the first one I've actually seen in the defence who can do that. Now, we have Bright, who is, you know, she's very good. But I thought um, Kennedy has a slight edge aerial-wise over um, Bright. You know, but then Carpenter and Greenwood, I'd say of those two, um, Greenwood would be the stronger for me. Carpenter shows a slight weakness. Maybe... Um, the forwards Fowler is in great form it's really great form but they're not taking their chances in front of goal that's one issue and, yeah. and there's also the fact that I guess Colombia engaged in the engaged in the dark arts which uh, we, we are very familiar with from an Irish perspective I guess as well but 
uh, dealing with that and, and, and having a quarter final that, that is as physical as it was possibly sets them up nicely to, to play Australia it could too but Gary is similar player yeah. similar type of player like she gets stuck in and it sort of seems to know where to create you know where when to foul it, where on the pitch to foul so yeah she herself and um, Cooney Cross I mean they're going to be a really tight match for the other two and then you have the wingers coming down bronze is on form mm. she's on form I think as well like England might be slightly fatigued because they have a one day less of recovery you know it may not because it, they don't as- appear to me to have been um, working as hard when I say working as hard I mean covering this much ground particularly in the last game where they sort of took their chances against um, Colombia uh, I think that um, they've reserved a little bit so they might be a little bit fresher nevertheless you know and I know um, Australia are probably five five um, ranks away from uh, England mm. nevertheless they were again against Colombia yeah. you know so you, you just don't know and it's all these type of things that the players look at and you know you'd look at well we know all these players we've already beaten England in April you know um, so that's going to be a massive lift for them uh, because I think England went 30 games unbeaten yeah. up till then you know then on the other hand you have a very clever astute um, manager in England who's had successes and knows how to win and she made quite good changes in the last game She's been criticised a bit for not using the subs enough. Is this fair or is like? Um, I thought that they. I think. I think between them all, they must have used about seven between the two teams. Seven only seventeen players. You know, it may be, but then you see they've lost four players, and I mean James is going to be a massive loss to yeah. them in this particular mm. game. It's going to boost Australia's confidence. Um, but yeah, they've they've lost a couple of tough players and strong players but nevertheless they've managed to slowly claw their way through and get to where we are they are now and you know on average they've across the players I think they've performed they look to me as if they've performed slightly better tactically than the Aussies but then the Aussies are want this more than anything else the home advantage is obviously the yeah. thing that kind of evens things up so you make England slight favourites slight favours now when you look at the Euros I mean it was the, the fans that really got behind them and made them rise their game you know so hopefully the Australian that will happen with Australia so I still slightly fancy England ok so England and you wouldn't be terribly surprised if this was like an extra time slash penalties situation would you I'd hope it wouldn't go to that, to that and I think if I was playing I wouldn't want to go to that because you know it's, it just takes it's too stressful. much of you yeah. and if you look at the penalties last week oh my <laughs> god 20 penalties <gasps> just amazing you know and even when you think of it um, some of the top class players you know the icons of the football have missed penos Rapino a classic example you know, so you can imagine what the pressure is like. Does that have an impact, like even on on the Australians, say for example, like a, a penalty shoot out of that of that length and the stress of it, and, and knowing you were only a kick or two away from from exit the tournament, like can that have an impact? Of course, it has to have it because it stays you, with you. you I, I mean, sometimes I look at players as they approach the ball or as they stand the ball and say they're going to miss. <laughs> Just something about them. The thing I can't is, put that, my finger on it. But loads of teams have like so the France ninety eight team came through two penalty shootouts in fairly short, yeah. to, and then put their best performance in in the final. So, like, if you if you if you use it the right way, we're a team of destiny. It's it's written in the stars that we're going to win this. Yeah. We're we're unbeatable now. Yeah. But if yeah. you let it be like this, oh my god, I can't believe we had to go. To, you know. Yeah. It's that's where the sports psychologists are earning the uh, the big bucks for. Well, you know, some of them are earning big bucks. Let's put it like that. Well, if, if they were certainly Arnold's um, psychologist is. <laughs> um, the the game today. What do you expect to happen in? in so the game kicks off in uh, seventeen minutes. Spain and Sweden kicks off in seventeen minutes. Uh, Spain obviously seem to be, you know, one of those weird situations where there's been a mad row with the coach, and yet everybody's still there, and they're in a World Cup semi final. So maybe they're maybe they're all just getting on with it. But what do you think is going to happen here? Well, if they have issues like that, they should be professional enough to put them aside and focus on what they want to do. I mean, they've scored fifteen goals, but they've also conceded six. You know, pretty easy goals. So they are capable of, you know, 
messing her up at the back, let's put it like that. I mean, their, their defence is quite shaky and sometimes they sacrifice the numbers in defence by playing three forward and three in the midfield, which exposes them quite a bit. Now, in contrast to the England and the um, Australians, the two teams today have used 22 of their 23 players, you know, except their third mm. goalkeepers. So that's given everybody a bit of experience. Now, technically, for me, the Spanish are far superior. However, and they score goals in play. However, the Swedish are have come on back on the top of a really tough game against Japan, who, to me, were the most skillful across the pitch, technically superior team that yeah. I've seen. And they bombarded them. And the, again, like um, the English... The Swedes were very resilient in defence. So, and they, they've got the aerial prowess as well. You know, now they'd need to get a quite a few set pieces for to score a couple of goals. I have one last thing I wanted to talk to you about. The Irish Independent this morning are reporting that the, uh, the FAI have completed their internal review of the World Cup and that Vera Powell will learn her fate. Uh, there's a board meeting in two weeks, so I'd expect a fair few leaks between now and then about what the board plan to do to see if they can get some sense of what the public thinks. What do you think should happen? Why should the public have a say in who's the manager, number one? Well, the FAI board yeah. want to know that they're going to make a decision that's popular. That's, Listen, they've that's how made that works. Some, they've made some very unpopular decisions in the men's. You know, why are they now experimenting with the women? Um, there's been leaks. You know, it just seems like it's written on the the wall for everybody to see the leaks have been coming out you know um, and it's untenable I think as a manager if you have that type of stuff to come out to be in the dressing room with players that you have to meander to um, and there's they for want of a better word have the bigger say you know yeah so I find uh, that very and difficult one of one of the original leaks here is that uh, the FAR are concerned are, are worried about being seen to be bowing to player power and yet at the same time like so I, I I don't think there's any football reasons at the moment for I I don't and I know there's a debate to be had about uh, the performance of Vera Pau got to the World Cup team performed okay bit disappointing not to have done a bit more but like the group was incredibly tough as we see from uh, how far Nigeria mm. and still Australia went mm. uh, and yet at the same time as you say if the players if all this stuff is coming out, she can't really go back in. It would just be a waste of time. I, I wouldn't be able to go back in. I don't think anybody with a bit of common sense would would be able to hold the dressing room when you have when you have to when I say meander to players where you're giving your energy to players who at the detriment of other players, you know, and that this is always on your mind. If I say something wrong, if I look the wrong way, are there going to be leaks out, you know? Um That's the players' fault though, right? Yeah. And so the difficulty is that the players are actually going to get what they want here, which is a new manager. The new manager is going to have to come in and s somehow lay down the law to a group of players who need to be careful what they wish for. Well, you want to be very, very um, tough minded and very single minded manager to come into a dressing room where you have to um, where you have at the back of this. Right. Where you have players, player power, for want of a better, better word. Um, so they'd have to set it down from the get go and it did have to for me I would always step aside from players no matter when I managed the side there were players that I had played against and players that I knew but I had to distance myself so much from them because you have to be able to do that there would be no friends because there's no friends in football So you think that Vera can't come back really? It, it, I just don't think as a person if I was her there's no way I could come back to the dressing room. She's very popular with the public. She's done tremendous for women's football in the country. She's done marvellous stuff, particularly for us um, trailblazers. We never would have got a cap. We never would have been, you know, recognised at all um, had it not been for her and the success of the players. At the end of the day, it doesn't matter really what happens. Players will always play. It's the manager who falls on you know, that's the end of it. All right. Well, we find out exactly what happens when the board meeting happens in a couple of weeks' time, and unless obviously they make an announcement in the meantime. But Linda, good stuff. Thanks a million for joining us. Cheers. Thanks.